will Brother. look at the camera or look at you? Either one. All right. That's good. All right. Brother Malik, I uh, want to welcome you to our story. Oh, yes. And I want to begin the Katrina celebration with the important points that you feel people in New Orleans and around the country need to embrace? Well, uh, the very first thing is the Patriot Act. Because under the Patriot Act, if it's a state of emergency, we give the president carte blanche. When Katrina hit, it was George Bush that was president. Now we have a, a George Bush on steroids. You know, uh, what would happen if it hit again? You know, are we prepared as a people? Can uh, yeah, you know, you got those that have wealth that will run off like they did the last time. But as for those who don't have wealth, you know, those who have to be forced to depend upon the government, you know, will we be forced again to experience the nightmare of uh, the Superdome and the convention center? Right now, they say that if you have no uh, means of leaving, you could uh, go to you could go to uh, come up, come up, come up, come up. Just all right, you could. Uh, all right. You could go. We can to, hold it if you want. No, no, that's my son. Oh, okay. Hold it. got these big hands up in the air, you know, places, evacuations places. But they don't tell you where they're going to send you. They tell you that, hey, you can take, uh, take what you could put a carry in your lap and get in, and, and come there and come to one of the evacuation centers and then they're going to put you on the bus. The bus going to bring you to the train station. Once you get to the train station, you don't know where you're going. You know, uh, so is that an evacuation plan? You know, I mean, you have to leave everything you own, you dig, uh, take just what you could carry in your lap to go to the train station without the knowledge of from there where you're going. You know, how are you going to tell your loved one? can't tell them, well, hey, I'm going to be at the train station because you don't know where they're sending you from there. You can't say, well, I know that, uh, that, uh, that, that there's a, uh, a plan for the, for the, uh, to take me to, uh, to Houston. So now I can make preparation with my family to know that uh, uh, just meet me in Houston. It's, it's no telling where you're going to be at. And, and then the hardest part is everybody tell you about the evacuation plans and everything else. But if we hit and you have lost everything, how are you going to come back? What services that this city going to have uh, going to be made available for your return? Because that's the hardest part. Anybody could run, you know, I mean, uh, you know, rats could run, anything could flee, you know, but when you return, if you're going to return, how are you going to return, you know, uh, where are you going to get the basics, if you come back and your house is damaged, you know, how long are you going to have to wait before you could uh, secure your house where it's livable, you know, if you have to be gone three weeks or a month. And you have spent your money uh, staying in motels or staying with family members and things like this here. And then you're coming back, even though you may was employed 
doing it pre-Katrina, now it's post-Katrina. Do you still have a job? And if you don't have a job, how are you going to make it? Let me ask you um, about this preparation plan. I know I hear a lot of the governmental agencies preaching preparation, preparation, preparation. But what does that actually mean when I hear no follow-up from the government concerning preparation, the plans, what it entails, where we should be focusing our energies on, and what we should be planning to do once we have the preparation in place. What do you say to those that preach preparation but make no means of educating the people or explaining what preparation can and should be? You know what that sounds like? A song that James Brown used to sing. Hmm. We talking loud but ain't saying nothing. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, how can you, listen, the Red Cross do a wonderful job as it relate to preparation for a family or for an individual. But what about a community? Right now, we got to get beyond this. You know, I mean, I've never seen a storm come here and just affect the Raheem family. And everybody else, and, and, and the allergy is, is bad. You know, when, the, when, when Katrina hit, look at the impact it had on, uh, on uh, the lower night wall. And we talking about 13 years later and still look at the, the lower night wall. So, what the government is saying, yeah, 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 it's preparation, but it's preparation for whom? And uh, that's all that, that, that uh, Katrina showed us, was that all the preparation was for the rich, you know, for the well-connected. But the only preparation they gave to the poor is the convention center, mm -hmm. the Superdome, you did, without any means of surviving it. So again, uh, I don't see no preparation. That's why we as a people, we cannot depend upon this government. You know, we can no longer say that, uh, hey, uh, well, you know, we got Obama as president, you know, and he gonna look out for it, which I think he might have. I can't, I would not put my head on the chopping block and say that he was, uh, he, that, that his plan was any, any better than George Bush. Now, I, I, it might be better than Trump, you know, but, uh, but that's about it. Seeing that you have um, come into New Orleans after Katrina with the common ground plan and services that they provided, what is your outlook and understanding for our community to be prepared? Well, the first thing, I didn't come into New Orleans. I was already in New Orleans. You know, uh, I didn't leave for, the, uh, for Katrina. I was here. You know, I, I experienced Katrina right here in New Orleans. So I didn't leave. We didn't have a plan. We didn't have a plan, but when we formed common ground at my mother's uh, kitchen table, we ain't had the only thing that we knew it was time for us to get organized. And with that, I relied upon the lessons I had learned as a member of the Black Panther Party. You know, uh, I was blessed that when I was in the party, I was the OD, the, uh, the officer of the day. I'm the one who made it happen. That if uh, whatever it had to, uh, to, whatever we was doing, I was the one that made sure that it happened. So with that, I was able to fall up and back up on this. Uh, the first thing we did, we did an assessment on what is the needs, what is the community needs. 
what is the needs of evacuating a uh, community, and what's going to be the need of the of when the community returns. You know, because uh, when Katrina hit, I didn't think, uh, you know, I, I was uh, uh, like most people, you know, I, I, I didn't think that uh, that uh, that it was going to be as bad as it was. I thought we was going to be spared because the day before Katrina, you know, August the 28th, they, we were spared. You know, it deviated just enough that we knew that we wasn't going to get that direct hit. You know? But that 28th, that 28th of August, 2005, was also the 50th anniversary of the murder of Emmett Till. I truly believe it was the spirit of Emmett Till, of that young child. It was his spirit that spared us because if it would have hit New Orleans, the way it hit Perlington, Mississippi, we would have lost about 60,000 people. And out of that 60,000, maybe 55 to, to 59,000 would have been African Americans. You know? so, uh, we were spared. You know, we was on the weakest side of that hurricane, and it did uh, what it done to the city. But just think, if it wouldn't have hit Hammond, but it would have hit, I mean, if it wouldn't have hit Perlington, Mississippi, and would have hit Hammond, well, then we would have been on the eastern side of that hurricane, the strongest side of it. What would happen? What would happen right now if we get hit by a, 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 a Category 5 hurricane that like would hit Houston. You know, I mean, uh, Houston, is, certain parts of Houston is still suffering a year later. Puerto Rico, look, was, look what they're suffering. Bless the bone, uh, what we have went through from Katrina. Because 13 years later, we ain't learned nothing. We, we are, if, if a hurricane hit us right now, we would be still in the same dilemma that we was in 13 years ago. And that's a sin. Especially when you're talking about you in a city that is, uh, that you have uh, African Americans you know, in charge. You know, I mean, uh, and, and the most we could come up with with a plan that, uh, you know, go to, uh, uh, in Algiers, the evacuation station is the, uh, is the Arthur Monday. There's no plans for the Arthur Monday building to be open. So if you evacuate, you got to sit out there before it's raining. You got to sit out in the rain and wait for a bus to take you to, to the soup, to the, uh, to the train station, and then from there, God knows where they're gonna send you. You know, you have no protection on 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 how you how you gonna secure your house. If you're elderly, where you gonna get your medication from after the medication that you evacuate with run out? You know, if if you're gonna be able to take it out, you know, uh, what you gonna do for? Uh, if you, if you want to come back home and, and, and there's no electricity, there's no running water, there's no, nothing, I mean, how are you going to know that you're going to be able to come back and rebuild? You know, I mean, if, 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 if rebuilding was so, uh, was so easy, we wouldn't be in the dilemma that we're in now. It just, I mean, last week you had two veterans just got back into their house 13 years later. Two veterans just just got their house repaired. Thirteen years, you know. I mean, uh, what is your? I, I'm seventy years old. You know. I mean, can I wait thirteen years? You know, to, to get back into a house in the richest country on this planet. Obviously, the politicians don't have the answer. They don't want to find the answer. So, what? Can you give us as suggestions for preparation and to be ready if we have to experience another 
Well, well, the first thing we need to do, we need to establish emergency response teams or emergency response network among ourselves. Then we need to understand that it's upon us to make sure that we have the basics. You know, we, have, we need to make, because see, in the aftermath of Katrina, we threw it away enough food that we could have fed ourselves for months, if not a year or more. That, that's spurred in our refrigerators. Mm. And a testimony of that is look at how many refrigerators we had to throw away. You know, look at how many air conditions because of the Freon that we had to, uh, to throw away. There's certain things we could do. In Cuba, there's a disaster plan, and that disaster plan, uh, uh, when, uh, when, the, when they know that a hurricane has come, people could leave and take some of their uh, possessions with them and move out of harm's way. So when they come back, they don't have to go through the dilemma that we have to go through. The rich, what they do, they hire uh, movers mm -hmm. they, to move everything out. So they don't lose nothing. But the poor, the working poor, you know, I mean, how can they how can they move everything out without being properly prepared? You know, how can we make sure that uh, that, that 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 there's refrigerated trailers that people could put uh, put their food in because either you put it in or you lose it? And how can we break the most the most sinful lack that I see in, after, in the aftermath of Katrina. And that's individuals that had two and three cars. But before they allow another family to use that second or third car, they left it. You know, they left it. They didn't say, well, hey, man, listen, uh, I'm going to give you my car and you just follow me. You could load up your family in, in that car. No, uh, we left. And what did that happen? What happened after that? All the heavy metals, the lead that's in that car, everything soaked up into our ground. What did we do as for uh, soil remediation to make sure that the soil was clean when when people returned? Sixteen hundred people died in a night war. More than that died the first year after Katrina from respiratory ailments due to Katrina. You know, how can we make sure that never happened again? How can we make sure that there's health facilities open with a plan? We, right now I'm in a, 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 this a rehabilitation a, a complex. But I'm right adjacent to uh, uh, Lindy Boggs. Everybody know what happened at Lindy Boggs. How, how some people, they just picked them and said, well, I ain't going to uh, do anything to help you. I'm going to just let you die. How can we make sure that don't happen again? Right now, we're living with, uh, with, 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 with the experience of, uh, of, of the Superdome and the convention center. You know, I mean, uh, and, and, and now, 13 years later, what then happened? Did we find work for these uh, families? These kids now are growing up with the horrors of, we're dealing with, was it any uh, trauma counselors for them? I mean, do, do we have any plans to say that if it hit a hurricane, hit New Orleans, that these are the trauma uh, counselors that's going to be made available? That these are the faith base that's going to be made available? You know, we don't have nothing. That's all we know is, uh, is, is you leave, you know. But then we, uh, when you come back, what you coming back to? You know, and that's what we need to be prepared for. We need to be, be, be prepared for that if, if a hurricane hit New Orleans, that we have made arrangements with other cities, especially other cities that are on this Gulf Coast, that could be impacted by a hurricane. That if a hurricane hit us, we can go to, 
to, to, to Houston, we could go to, to uh, uh, Tampa, we could go to uh, any place on, on the Gulf Coast that had that been spared. And that if it hit them, that they could come here. They, that's all we need to do is come together. They, I mean, that, listen, if I had anything to, uh, to say to Mayor Cantrell, that is, hold a conference. Invite all these uh, other cities and, mis and mis uh, uh, municipalities here. And let's really come up with a, with a plan on how we will uh, help each other. Because if not, then what we're going to experience again is what happened in Jefferson Parish. They Gretna <coughs> closed this border on us. They, they, they isolated us. They quarantined us. And nothing happened to Gretna. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, you didn't hear uh, Jefferson, who was our congressman, who uh, could have went over there and, and, and forced them to open their borders up, or either held them accountable for not opening their borders up to American citizens. So again, you know, we need to be prepared. We need to, to take this and analyze. Listen, I don't have all the answers, but I tell you what, I have more than what I have seen. Hmm. You know, um, just just a brief note, footnote. Um, Gretna and, and Jefferson Parish came to the bridge, which is in Orleans Parish, and stopped the people trying to come well, over. They only came on the bridge and pushed them. It was under the bridge doing the same thing. You know, they didn't come saying, well, hey, as a fellow uh, citizen of this great nation, that we're going to uh, make sure that here's some of the things that, that you need and here's some of the supplies that you could have. What they've done is just say you can't come here. You know? And a lot of uh, young uh, African Americans, uh, uh, especially young men that went through that, you know, they're still carrying the scars of it. You know? So again, we got to make sure that we are prepared that, uh, that we can say that, yeah, we can survive. We can come together, because I'm going to tell you, I don't think, I truly don't believe that it's an insurmountable task. You know, it's something that we can do. We could do it with government, which would be quicker, but then we could do it without government. You know, I mean, we could be prepared. That's all we have to do is just, uh, just, just sit down and, and right now, if a storm come and, uh, and, 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 and nobody, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you get that phone? Just tell Tyrone I'm going to call him back. Uh, if a storm would pass. And, and, and <clears throat> devastated this area. Where are you gonna get water from? <laughs> Where are you gonna get water from? So, that's the essence of life. Where are you gonna get it from? Do you know how to purify water? Have you taught any? Uh, uh, is you teaching the community how to purify water? how to take that rainwater and make it drinkable, or either make it able that you can use. What you gonna do for sanitation? Hmm. The Superdome and the convention center became a cesspool because of lack of planning. You know, I had 300 people living in my mother's house and never had a, a, a problem with sanitation, with one talk. Why? Because we started from the very beginning doing compost tubs. You know, I mean, these are the things that people need to know. The average person here don't even know what a compost toilet is, let alone how to get prepared for it. Most people will say, well, hey, man, I'm going to fill my, my tub up with water. But what if your, 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 tub, your house is flooded? And now that tub of water that you put in, it's, it's flooded. You think, I mean, now what you gonna do? 
You know, when you come back, if you come back and, and, and you have, uh, and you need a new roof, you know if you need a new roof, you also, your house is also going to be inundated with that mold. You think, do you know how to, uh, how to do the mold abatement? You know, who's going to come and clean it? The priority is going to be first for the rich. You dig? Who's going to come and help us? And if I'm lying, then why are the night waters in the way it's in? Why is it in the shape it's in? And with most of us, we don't care about each other. Because if we did, ain't no way in the world you could go and, and watch a, a damn Mardi Gras parade knowing that your people is, is in the night war suffering like that. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, we, I mean, it's, a, it's been a, uh, not only a, a tale of government, but upon us, especially on some of our so-called community leaders. I mean, you got churches in the night ward right now, and it's supposed to be a Christian community, a Christian uh, state, a Christian country. But you got churches in the night ward right now that's still in a rebuild. You know? I mean, so uh, where you, and, and, and if you can't go, and, and when you have lost everything and go into a house of worship to find relief, you know, what, then where can you go? What had happened with our schools? And after matter of Katrina, they fired all the school teachers. Is that what we got to look forward to? You know, I mean, is, is any plans made for the re reopening the schools? You know, I mean, where's the priority? Where's the hospitals? And after matter of Katrina, I, had, I opened up four health clinics. I'm not a doctor. I don't have no uh, health care. Uh, uh, experience. But I was able to open up four health clinics. You know, but where's, where's the plan now for to make sure that there's health clinics? Where's, where is the plan right now for to say that, hey, this is going to be trauma to centers? And when a person come back and seeing that they have lost everything, you know, that you could come here and here's the counseling that is needed for you to, uh, to go through your recovery. You know, there's no plans. You know, listen, we spent, I believe it was over, uh, uh, Carl Gambit, he could give you the, mm -hmm. the, the proper figures on, on how much we spent per house to put a top on the roof mm -hmm. in comparison to what, how much the person made who put the top on it, you know? I mean, I believe it was $176 a square foot that we paid a so-called patriot, you know, to come and put a, a blue top up on the roof. But that, he was so patriotic that he paid the subcontractor who actually did the work only $2 a square foot. So he, you know, I mean, is, is, is that patriotism or is that just straight up a robbery? You know, is, is that's what we got to look at now? I mean, look at the billions that, 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 that came into New Orleans. You know, I mean, with all the billions that came in for everything. You know, I mean, uh, and look at the shape that we're in. You know, I mean, it's no reason why our, our community is uh, where you find a young man that can't find a job. You know, uh, this, but it, it's not for us. You know, and now we're definitely in a position with, with this, with our president now. You know, if we don't get prepared, you know, because Katrina wasn't nothing but a warning. Mm. You know, if we don't get prepared, you know, then, uh, then we are doomed. They say a foolish act is a person that, uh, a foolish uh, act or uh, the, the person that sit around and just wait for the same thing and, and the same response over and over again. Which, and, you know, which asks the question, after going through Katrina, and there's a lot of people here that went through Katrina in New Orleans that went through Katrina, what does it take to get people to realize that they have to do things differently and become 
more concerned about preparation, knowing what to do and how to do it when the time comes, as opposed to going to the parades, going to the second lines, going to the corner watering holes, just to party, party, party. What is it going to take to get many of us out of that mentality where we do nothing for preparation and only concern with self-gratification? It's going to take you. Because you have a voice. You have a, the means of, 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 of exposing, of ringing that bell. Your show. Our story. It's going to take you. It's going to take you to stand up like you're doing right now and saying that this is not right. You know, that, that I don't care what it takes. It's, it's going to take individuals like you. It's going to, like WBOK. It is, it's going to take that. Because without it, we are lost. Mm. You know, because if we sit around and we look at, at these so-called leaders, ask any of them what is their plan for their community. Ask any of them if they're community. Ask the Zulus. They could run around and put all this black paint and white and, and the white lips on each other and run around the city. Ask them as they prepare. Mm. If they, what are they prepared to do? Ask some of these individuals that run for office. You know, what, what are you planning on doing? Ask them as they tell everybody to move to, the, uh, to New Orleans East an area of this city that's more prone to flooding than any place else. You know, what, what, what you gonna do for these people once they get there? You move them out to New Orleans East, and now what they gonna do? You know, if there's a hurricane, you know, how you gonna help them? You know, yeah, yeah, you could scatter them all. But see, New Orleans is a unique city. It's very few cities where you don't live in the city, the city live in you. You know, you could run a person, because they thought, show that they could, uh, after Katrina, because we had politicians, racist politicians that said that this was God's sin. That God uh, sent a hurricane to do what, what they couldn't do. And that displaced our poor. You know, that's no longer being tolerated. So what they gonna do? Is they gonna in, imprison all of us? You know? I mean, right now, you got to remember, under a state of emergency, Donald Trump can enslave almost half of the, the, uh, the male population in, in New Orleans because the 13th Amendment give him that right. You know, because with that exception clause, you know, say, yeah, we're going to end slavery in all the, the states and territory of, the, of this nation with the exception of those that have been duly convicted of a crime. They didn't say a felony or a misdemeanor. They say a crime. So what they did with us after slavery? The vagary of the law. You can't find a job so we could pick you up now and, and convict you of vagrancy. And now we can work you to death. And don't say that, that it can't happen again. Because it's happening every day. Every day you could go to Angola and see nothing but slaves. You could call them convicts. You could call them a prisoners. But they slave. You think, and, what are they, what are they, uh, and, and, and don't tell me you won't work them to death. Because you're working them to death every day. No, I mean, here in this city here, uh, I mean, we have, uh, what, uh, seven universities, uh, three black universities. Ask, where's their plan? It's just the three black ones. Not the white ones, just the three black ones. Ask them what is their plan in case of emergency. Did each one of them say, well, hey, uh, I'm going to take our years. Oh, well, one going to take uptown, or one going to take downtown, and we're going to work with them, and, and we're going to make sure that there's uh, some kind of uh, uh, emergency response plan. 
only plan I've ever heard of from the universities, uh, Dillard, Xavier, and Southern, are plans to evacuate their students and faculty out of here. But is that a plan? <laughs> Not for the people of New Orleans, no. So it ain't no plan. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, and if they have to return, and, 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 and each one of these uni uh, universities is, uh, is, is damaged or destroyed, then what is the plan? You know, um, I've worked with you for a good while, and I have noticed that you have not received any real recognition from the city or the politicians in here. I have always assumed that the reason you have not received recognition is because you shamed the politicians so badly when you came at, when you put together a plan in the city and started working the plan with the people and became so successful at that when the people that had the resources weren't able to do it. Do you get many of them calling you for counsel or any advice as to what they could or should be doing? In the aftermath of Katrina, uh, when we found the common ground, and you got to remember, please remember, that common ground was founded by members of the Black Panther Party. Mm -hmm. Even the name of the common ground came from Robert King Wilkerson. Who was in Angola at the time? No, uh, he was out. Oh, he was out. He was out. Herman Wallace was in, in Angola and Albert Woodfox. But from solitary confinement cells, they did more than any of the politicians that's in, that was in this city. They did more than Ray Nagel. They did more than uh, any other uh, politician that, at that time. No, I never, listen, I never had one to even come in and ask me anything. I never received no recognition. When everybody else was receiving the little $2,000 that they was giving people, I never received a dollar. Right now, uh, I'm fighting to keep my mother's home where Common Ground was found at that. If you would come to my house, I've, I've yet to, 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 to get any funds for the repairs of it. So again, no, I haven't seen anything. I haven't, I haven't. Right now, the reason why I had this stroke is because of uh, this, what I'm trying to do. The, uh, at 70 years old, I have, I have to talk about going back to work because of the fact that uh, the other, you know, FEMA never gave me a dime. You know, uh, listen, City Park wouldn't even be open if it wasn't for the work that we did. Grand Isle wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for how many volunteers we sent out there to help with the wetlands. And now one of them, I never got a free ticket to the jazz fest, less than any, any funding. You know, uh, no, I haven't seen none of them. Only time, only assistance I get is from the grassroots. And, the only, and, and with most of them, they look at me and they say, well, hey, man, I won't help nobody. Look at all the help, look at all the people you help, and then uh, look what kind of shape you're in, you know? I mean, uh, listen, I can't even drive. They took my driver's license, they took my passport, you know? So again, you know, I mean, uh, there's no, uh, there was no recognition, you know? Yeah, yeah, you give me a, a plaque with, a, with appreciation, you know, for nothing, but I can't go and spend it. You know, I, I mean, uh, uh, every year around this time, you know, I, I, I go through this. But as I'm getting older, you know, now my health failed me, you know, because of it. But the, the good part about it is now you got some young people that's coming up and they're asking me. Because, they, they, you know, one thing about it, the truth going to be told. You can't hide the truth forever, you know. And they are coming around, and, I, and I'm teaching them emergency preparedness, you know. 
because I because they know I'm probably uh, more prepared for a, a disaster than anyone in this city. Hmm. You know, I mean, uh, and, and 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 this is a thing that we got to be able to teach them. You got to be able to teach them, well, hey, man, this is how you do the soil remediation. This is how you brew a, a bacteria tea so that you can make sure that, you, uh, that, you, that, that what you return to is going to be safe, environmentally safe for you and your family to come back to. You know, these are some of the steps that you need to make. You know, why you need to do it. Why you need to, before you leave, take all the toxins that's in your garage and under your sink in your kitchen and bath and make sure that you take it out. If this, the water that inundated Katrina, it wasn't toxic when it, when it first got here. Well, that water turned toxic because of the heavy metals, I mean, because of the toxins that we had in this city. And we wasn't, and we didn't do no uh, remediation. You dig? We just were in our quest to rid this city of all the metric tons of water. We just dumped it in the most fragile environment that exists in Louisiana. And that's our lakes, streams, and wetlands. And now we eating out of it. You know, we eating it. And nobody's saying nothing. Yeah, everybody say, well, yeah, well, you know, if, if you eat uh, if you eating the seafood for a week or two, it's probably cool, you know, two times or a month out of the year. But people here eat it uh, every month, every week, you know. So again, you know, is is it safe for them? You know, I mean, uh, where was the the remediation work uh, done? You know, did they say, well, hey, with the, with the colleges? That hey, uh, we gonna we gonna waive your tuition or your uh, or school fees if you would come up in here and start helping with the rebuilding. Did we do any deconstruction or did we do just demolition? You know, and that's what we have to look at. In the night was most of those old houses, they might have been old, they might have been regular. Those houses was made of cypress, or water wood. We didn't save any of it. And then we replaced them with white pine. Yeah, you ought to rebuild your house in white pine. That's all you got to do is go look at the houses that uh, Brad Pitt uh, built. And you can see what happened when you build with white pine. They, now they, they, they ain't lasting. We destroyed the projects. The, all the projects were made of bricks. Mm -hmm. And we uh, and we rebuilt them in wood. That's all you got to do is go to the night board and see what happened to wooden structures in a stone. They, they were wiped away. The only structures that survived was brick. You know, but where is it? Do we tell people about elevation? You know how to elevate their houses? You know? No, we still got individuals buying houses and building houses on slabs. You know? So again, it's, you know, we have to, we're going to have to, WC, especially under the era of Trump. You know, we're going to have to get our act more together. The, the party is over for us. Either we're going to go back from uh, the end of reconstruction and experience that again, or we're going to make sure that we have, we prepared to take care of ourselves because we can no longer depend on others. You know, because, uh, you know, if, if a man has to make a decision on his family or your family, it's going to always be his family. You know? So, again, we have to make sure that we can take care of our family. And just running ain't no answer. Hey, how y'all doing? Right. I got food, Mr. Rain. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we're understanding that there needs to be some serious changes 
not only in community, but individual and family. What suggestions do you have, first for the individual and second for the family? Well, I'm going to tell you, as for the individual and family, they need to go to the Red Cross. I don't have any plans for the family or for the individual. I'm talking about communities. How can a community come together? How can a community come together to make sure that we go, that if we evacuate, we're going to evacuate as a community and we're going to return as a community? That we're going to take and make sure that our schools in our community is used for emergency uh, shelters? How can we make sure that, 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 that food is there? With the, with, how can we make sure that, that, that we are no longer running around and having people buy uh, gas generators when there's no gas station open uh, in the city? You know? And then how to use it, how to use a chainsaw how to make sure that there's enough uh, 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 tools that a person that, that, that now don't have a job can buy the tools to, or, or have the tools made available to do the kind of work that needs to be done to repair their home. You know, these are the things that, uh, how can we start teaching people, you know, how to do the soil remediation, how to do the mold abatement. Know, when is the time for the uh, uh, to talk about closing up those walls? You know how to make sure that this area is safe. How do you? Where, where is your medical center? That you're gonna make sure that that uh, that there's a place that you could go and get the tetanus shots. You know how how can you make sure that these kids don't have to sit around and just look at dead bodies? How can you make sure that the elderly is is being cared for. I'm 70 years old and just had a stroke. You know, I mean, the Lord that blessed me, I could get around. But how many seniors in this city can't get around? How many of them in facilities like this facility, facility that I'm in right now? What would happen to them? You know, we got to make sure of this. You know, they say proper planning prevent poor performance. Mm. So we got to start planning. We got to start planning properly. We got to sit down and lock heads and, and say, well, hey, man, listen, my church is going to be a, 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 a beacon in case of a hurricane. If, 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 uh, and you return, we're going to have this facility back open. This faith-based institution going to be open and going to be serving our community. How can we make sure that this happens? How can we make sure that, 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 that food will not be a problem? How can we make sure that water will not be a, a problem? How can we make sure of this without us coming together? You know? And it's easy to prepare for it. You know, I mean, listen, uh, in, in the aftermath of Katrina, they was able to use algiers as a, as a launching board for the city's recovery. Why? Because we at Common Ground cleaned over, 30, uh, over 300 stone drains. We made sure that, that, that after Katrina, that when Rita hit, that Algiers didn't flood. Where's the plan for it now? You know, I mean, uh, no one from, and, and I'm going to tell you, it hurts when you sit around and you look at so-called uh, community and politicians, community leaders and politicians, sit up and talk all this madness and don't have a plan. <laughs> you know, it really hurts. You know, they said that one of the reasons why I had this stroke was because of stress. Because every year when it come around this time, I suffer with that. You know, I'm no, no longer a young man. I mean, I've been blessed that I got a, a group of young men 
that's willing to sit down and listen to me, you know. But they don't have, you know. I mean, but just think, WC, if a thousand, if we put out a drive for a thousand hammers, a thousand souls, a thousand wheelbarrows, and then we have a place that we are storing them in to make sure that everybody have the opportunity of respirators. Ask every family around here what's an N95 dust mask. Mm. They don't even know this. You know, these are the th and these things we could easily do. You know, I mean, yeah, I'm not telling to give it to me. But if, but if we had it, if, if, if instead of the police working against the community, and the fire department working against the community, because in the aftermath of Katrina, all the firemen had guns. They didn't have no band-aids or, or no uh, paramedics. Uh, they had guns. And in the fire uh, house on, uh, on Opelousas, they had water stacked up in there from floor to ceiling and wouldn't give away one bottle. Mm. How can we make sure that it don't happen again? How can we make sure that the vigilantes that roam the algae is killing at will? Because I'm going to tell you something. The city hall was the courthouse. So from that courthouse, I know they could hear them shooting. No, no one said, well, well you know, well, why, why is they shooting in the algaes? Because, again, there haven't been one vigilante that had been arrested. It had not one of them been charged with anything. So how can we, we have to make sure, it's upon us to make sure, that it don't happen again. Because if we just sit around and wait on the government, it's going to happen again. No, especially when you have a government that don't care about you. And you can't say that in the richest country on this planet that you have this kind of poverty. You know? And again, every time, I don't even, I, that's, I hate going to the night ward. Because every time I go in the night ward, it's upset me. Because there's no reason for it to be in the, in the dismal shape that it's in now. I hate looking at kids have to walk down uh, blocks without any lights. Have to walk down blocks with, with fields, uh, I mean, with, with, uh, with wilderness. You know? I hate to go and drive there and see it. But we don't care. In our experience as Africans in, the, in America, because I don't classify myself as an African American, I classify myself as an African living in America. How can you say that you could have the biggest? events held in this country, held it here in, in America. Hey, how y'all doing? And this, and, and this is the kind of shape we are in. You know? So again, you know, I mean, we have to, uh, to get, we, we have to do a much better than that. I'm sorry, but that stroke have a little bit of impact upon me, my brother. That's but, all right. Uh, you're doing very well. They, uh, you know, we have to start making uh, arrangements to make sure that our community is, you know, have have the basics. They got at least the basics. Right now, we don't even have the basics. You know, I mean, if a if a storm would come through here, like would, would hit uh, uh, Hawaii, mm. they could, that would hit here. What would, what would we do? <laughs> you know, I mean, what would we do? I, I mean, uh, we know that the rich are going to flee. 
they have that ability. But what about the working poor? What about those that can't, that, that after two or three weeks, they don't have no money? Then what they going to do? What, what, what you going to do when condition, economic condition, force you to leave an area that's, that's not flooded to come back here? How you going to make your mortgage payment? You think here and have a safe place for your children. You know? I mean, look how many weeks it was before trailers was allowed here. You know, I mean, but in the, in the interim, how are you going to survive? What you would do if, if Red Cross stopped serving food? Hmm. You know, what, what would you do if they stopped giving you water? Or would they allocate for you that them ran out? You know, how are you going to clean yourself? You know, how are you going to wash your dishes? You know, how are you going to make sure that, 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 that just the basics you have for you and your family. You know? And again, they're prepared. They are prepared because FEMA is no longer uh, FEMA. FEMA is Homeland Security. You could call it FEMA, but it's Homeland Security. And, and Homeland Security is not about providing aid. It's about providing protection. Protection for who? You know, because the FEMA was doing this job as, as nowhere in the world. The night water being this in, in the dismal situation that is in now, or, or, or Texas, certain parts of Texas, or especially Hawaii. You know, I mean, it's, it's no reason. You know, there's no uh, 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 real move to tell people, well, hey, man, listen, uh, either get out here and buy uh, solar panels, or either we're going to uh, make preparation that we manufacture our own right here. Mm. Or somewhere in the Gulf Coast to make, to make sure that we have that alternative. You dig? So if, if it passes, you dig? What I was saying about uh, uh, earlier with you about the, uh, the generators. Mm -hmm. I've seen people spend up to $1,000 on buying generators. The most you could get out of a generator is 12 hours uh, with, with a full capacity of gas. If you fill it up, you got you 12 hours. Most of them, that's five gallons. Five gallons of gas will give you 12 hours of electricity. But it's 24 hours in a day. So again, where are you going to get this gas from? Because no filling stations was open. Right. People would have, I'm saying people go as far as Baton Rouge to get gas and then bring it back here. How are you going to ride with all this gas? Where's your gas tanks? When it's simple things that we could have done, do you know that they could have brought just one of those engines off of one of them trains and, 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 and roll them down them tracks and just let it sit there and idle and could have provided enough electricity to cover blocks. You know, we could have put uh, 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 generators. Blaine Kern had a generator for every, every tractor that it had for, uh, for Mardi Gras hmm. and didn't use any, not to help our, our community. But they hired uh, uh, a thug that sit up and, and, and said that he killed 29 of us. Yeah. So again, what, what are we going to do? You know, I mean, the party is over. Yes, it you is. know, and it's time for us to get our act together. This year, we just had the Omegas here. Omegas are college educated blacks. Did we sit down with them and drive up a plan? No, we just parted. Mm -hmm. We did the little stumping and things that gave concerts and, and parted with them and, they, and didn't even care about them. Ask how many of them that came down here did they go and visit the night ward? 
<laughs> we just, uh, from there, prior to that, we had uh, essence. The largest essence ever. Every night the concert was sold out. What did they do in the night walk? Nothing. We're going to have to buy you classic. Southern and, 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 and Grambling. Don't come here. You know? They're going to be right there in the, in, again in the Superdome, going to the French quarters where they don't like us. They tolerate us there uh, doing these events because we so. I don't want to say that because I know I have people. Uh, probably want to burn my house down, <laughs> you know, but we so fucking stupid, excuse my expression, you dig, that we go give our money to these people that know they don't like us. I can't think of the name of that, uh, that bar in the French quarters where they... Razoo. Razoo! Killed us! And we still say, I don't care, you didn't kill me, so I'm going in here and I'm going to spend my money. Because I came here for a good time. I don't want to hear about no politics that, that's happened here. You know? We gave a march during the essence. And people still went up in there. You know? So, I mean, it's a, what can we do? You know, and, and these kids now... You could tell a kid that done experienced that Superdome and that convention center from one that didn't. You know, you could see why they don't care. They ain't never seen no love. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't tell them about no brotherhood. I mean, I get the respect if they know me, but if they don't know me, you think I'm just another victim. I'm just another person I, I pray for these predators because we don't turn them into predators. Mm -hmm. When you come up in here and you find more Latinos that just came in here working in our community, building houses for us, than you have us doing. Mm -hmm. And at one time, uh, the majority of the construction that was done in this city was done by us. Now we don't even do 10% of it. It's the, the majority of it is built by Latinos. I ain't got nothing against them. But when I look across the street from where I live, and I see almost 100 Latinos working on a construction job, and not one African American, I got a problem. When I see them talking about building movie studios, without talking about employing none of us, I got a problem. You know? I got a problem when I see it, uh, blacks working for, for less than half of what a, a, a white person made. I got a problem. You know, this disparity has got to change. That's the reason why you got these kids killing up each other, because even now, 12, 13 years after Katrina, the largest employer of young African-American males in this city is the drug trade. It is sad. That's the dollar that flip over in our community. It stays in our community longer than any other dollar in our community. And, and something is wrong when, when, when that becomes the, uh, the, the way. Well, that's all the only thing I could look at is uh, selling drugs if I want to stay in New Orleans. Most of the kids, one of my friends teach at land. And the three classes that he teach, he asks each one of them what they're going to do, because they're seniors. What they're going to do after graduation. Only a handful say that they was going to stay in the walls. Hmm. Everybody else say, man, we leaving. I'm, go, I'm, I'm leaving. In the richest city of, of, of this size in the country, the fastest growing city in, the, in, in America, right here, 
and you're going to flee. Something is wrong. Do you have any um, parting words for the people of New Orleans? I won't say for the people of New Orleans because uh, I can't speak for all the people of this city. <laughs> For the black folks in New Orleans. Oh, well, nah, I got something for party <laughs> words for them. <laughs> yes, sir. And that is get your act together. <laughs> yeah. Break that dependency upon on these so called leaders. Hold them accountable. Look at what others are doing. Look at what others are doing. And let's do the same. You know, it's, it shouldn't be. That uh, that other people is prospering while we are not. Let's save our community. This is our history. This is our. The first slave was brought here in in 1722. We coming up to the 300 year anniversary. Of it. Let's make sure that we honor them. We honor the sacrifices that our people have made here. By one, let's stop killing each other over nothing. Let's understand that, that dope plus capitalism equal genocide. Let's not do this. Let's, let's find other ways to live. I try to tell anyone that, hey man, if you could sell drugs, you could sell drawers. You could sell shoes. You could sell pants. You know? So again, let's find other ways that we can take care of ourselves. And the first thing we need to do is start supporting the, uh, the Circle Fool stuff. <clears throat> if you want to show anything, let's make sure that it can survive. Why? Because that's... When I was coming up in Algiers, there was three black service stations. Three. That was owned by blacks. Three. And at that time, maybe 20% of us had cars. Because I was raised in the era that uh, we was told you buy a house to set up a car. Now we buy a house, I mean, we buy cars and rent a house, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but you can't live in no car. We ain't even got enough sense to say, well, I'm going to buy an RV. We buy cars. We're going to put our wealth in cars. That as soon as you pull off the lot, they depreciate it instead of buying a house. We got to come together and start uh, doing what we did uh, in days of old. Mm. Churches need to come together. Mm -hmm. Because you can't say that you believe in God, but you fear being on the streets. Mm -hmm. you know? So again, we have to change our ways. And uh, in closing, uh, as a Christian, uh, in Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter of the 14th verse, where it speaks that if my people, who is called by my name, would turn from there, and I'm not saying it for a you know, because again, I had a stroke and I can't really, you know, one of the things that is, is my memories. He said, but if we are called by my name, it would turn from their wicked ways. In here, here of our land. Because one day, I believe we all gonna be held accountable. But what did you do? Who did you help? Oh man, I helped my family. Well, the demons in hell helped their families. Mm -hmm. You ain't proving that anybody can help their own. Did you reach out to another family? You know, one thing I love about uh, what Harriet Tubman said, she said, yeah, I freed a, a thousand slaves. I could have freed another thousand if only they knew they were slaves. That's right. So That's again, right. we have to understand this. And it's upon us 
those of us with conscience to be that light for those that are lost. Power to the people, my brother. All power. All power to the people. Thank you. All right.